Hello and welcome to this uh, special episode on Armies on Parade. With me today, I have uh, John Davis. Um, John, you have a quite successful Instagram account, wouldn't you say? I think we got up to. I got seven thousand followers. I think it was the day before yesterday. So I'm quite, I'm quite, uh, <laughs> quite impressed. Really, I'm quite surprised to be honest. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. And uh, the name is uh, JP uh, Online Miniatures. If you want to check him out, there's some great content there. But the theme of today's episode is that we both made an Armies on Parade entry. So, um, John, I think we're going to start talking about yours. Okay. It's um, quite an impressive build, I must say. Uh, you should be start seeing. You should be start seeing Jesus Christ, it's my English. You should be seeing now a few images uh, start scrolling by of uh, your project. Yeah. Well, uh, how did you get started with this idea? I remember us talking about play gores, like I don't know one and a half, two years ago or something like that? Yeah, it's actually, that's quite a, a depressing thing, really, that it's taken me, <laughs> taken me over two years to get a very small army's worth of figures together. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's true, because I originally, I started doing some some pestigors that you can see in the, the foreground, sort of running up the beach. Mm -hmm. And um, that was where I started with this, with the Nurgle stuff, basically. And... Um, they seem quite popular. I enjoy playing with them, and they're, they're normally part of my beastmen army. Um, but I quite enjoyed doing all of the the gribbly, the um, the the, the uh, infected Nurgle um, flesh and worms, and all of the the general decay. So I thought I would have a few more different models that I might um, add to the collection. Yeah. So here's the the original Pestigors that yeah. started it off. Um, and I really enjoyed doing that. I personally think these might be one, like one of your best builds ever done, to be honest. They are incredible. Surprisingly simple as well. Um, the, the plague bearer bodies and the um, normal gore legs and a little bit of green stuff, they came together quite nicely, I think. They were, um, yeah, quite pleased with them. <laughs> Where are the heads from, if I may ask? The heads are from the night haunt. What are they called? The ones that hold the, the glaze. Oh, yes. The, yeah, the thing, the guys that everyone thinks are rats for some reasons. But the ones that everyone thinks are rats. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, the, the not rats, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then you just added a coal and some horns to them, and they, oh, like, the flayed faces are just excellent. They're quite, dis I must admit, when I was painting them, they made me feel a little bit sick, which I think is, um, if you're painting Nurgle, that's a sign that you're doing it, doing it well, I think. <laughs> Yeah, like speaking of uh, sick stuff, I mean, there's a maggot coming out of that middle guy's nose. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that was more of a happy accident, to be honest. I got to the stage of putting on the uh, green stuff tentacles on the back of their head to sort of disguise the join where the, um, because they're using Marauder Horseman heads. Mm -hmm. And so to disguise the, the gap between the Marauder Horseman head and the, the, um, the Blight King body, I was using green stuff tentacles, and one of them happened to to fall when I was uh, moving it with the the um, sculpting tool, and it fell into the hole in his nose. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh no, I think I think that will stay there. That looks quite good." <laughs> oh, that makes it so much better. <laughs> I think it's even more disturbing because it actually goes into his mouth from his nose. So uh, oh. I don't want to think about the logistics of it too much, really. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, legs from uh, the savage orc pigs. Yeah, Lighting bodies and then uh, murder horsemen heads with some various horns and bits and boggles on. Exactly, and then the uh, the shields are, are minotaur shields, because it was quite hard to find anything else that didn't look really out of proportion with them. It was um, they're quite chunky. They're quite chunky. They into, if you stand one next to a normal black king, they they tower over them. <laughs> the Malapinta, the Santa Malaria, and the Tina. I hope I pronounced those correctly. <laughs> <laughs> they um so, they, they were they were part of a pun actually because um I was I was with my my girlfriend and we were having dinner and, and she she's Spanish so um we were we were having dinner one night and I can't remember why but we were talking about Christopher Columbus and we were talking about how in Spanish school um every everybody has to learn the names of the ships when when he went to the Americas and um uh, the, the the original ones are Santa Maria. Um, Nina, which is like a small girl in, in English, and Pin and uh, Pinta, which is well, is Pinta. And um, we were making uh, we were making a joke about oh Santa Maria, and I think for some reason uh, this was me with my terrible Spanish. I said something that sounded more like Santa Malaria than Santa Maria, and um, and we kind of got um, 
talking about this idea of having a, a Nurgle themed um, Nurgle themed army based on the, the story of Christopher Columbus, and it was uh, it was kind of quite organic, really. No pun intended. It sort of came. From that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, well, it's somehow fitting, you know, the New World settling is bringing plagues and stuff to uh, well, the Americas, so I, I don't know. It was it's... quite funny, actually, because it was originally just as a, a little joke, and we thought it was quite funny because of the pun, but it's mm -hmm. been quite controversial online. There have been quite a few people who've um, taken it quite seriously. So. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine now with COVID and stuff also, yeah. people are a bit... Um, well, I wonder why... Games Workshop has toned down Nurgle a bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there haven't been any release, any Nurgle releases since May, since March, as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, today you know, decadence and decay or whatever came out. So I guess that's something. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it, I could, it's like a general theme when looking at uh, your models. Uh, see here, <laughs> those are plants of some sort. Yes, so they're, um, what's it called? I think it's called reindeer moss, I think. Yeah. Um, and you can normally buy it in sort of craft stores. People use it as Christmas decoration quite yeah. a lot. Um, I can say I live in Sweden. These are on every single tree, everywhere. Are they? Oh, right. So, well, maybe maybe Sweden is the place to get it then, because it seems to be very expensive here in Spain. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I actually own a few reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, so yeah, it's uh, called renlav here in Sweden. It's uh, it's basically the thing that uh, the reindeer eat during the winter from the trees. As they usually can't dig through like the ice sheath that uh, forms well at the start of winter. Oh. And it seems to be quite um, quite robust. It doesn't seem to degrade at all. I imagine that maybe that's part of the reason why it survives as well, and and, and they can eat it. Yeah, perhaps. Mm. But yeah, it's very useful for making um, all sorts of horrible foliage <laughs> and um, plant life for Nurgle. I, in this particular case, this was me being a bit lazy because um, the, the the cabin, the, the the crew compartment part of the um, Eidoneth ship, which is what the ships are originally made from, mm -hmm. um, is is empty. And at one point, I was thinking about um, trying to add like a lower deck and having something that you could see down into. And in the end, I settled with being a little bit lazy and just filling it with reindeer moss. So it looked like there's all <laughs> sorts of um, horribleness filling out. But originally, these are the the Eidoneth scenery, the the, the three ships mm -hmm. um, that have then been reconstructed with bits of balsa wood. In this case, not too much balsa wood, but in some of the other ones, there's um, bits of dowel for the to make the sail, and the the sail itself is made with with plaster card. Mm -hmm. So. Uh... Well, on the topic of moss and stuff, there's just so much organic stuff on these. Um, <laughs> how how do you prepare it so it like retains its col its intended color and uh, doesn't degrade or such? Yeah. So so um, with this one, I haven't actually used it too much. But in some of my other um, projects, I've used other types of moss, uh, green mosses that I, I found out on walks and things like that. And the problem tends to be that um, over time it yellows, it bleaches. You can't keep it fresh. So I, I read an interesting thing about, I think it was a rail model, um, rail mo um, people who do rail... Uh, Railroads, yeah. Oh, there, 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 yeah, thank you. <laughs> the, uh, the, the railroad stuff. And they have a technique where to preserve the moss, they, they um, cook it with, glyc with glycerin and green food dye. And it basically keeps it fresh and looking like it's still alive for, for years. And I did this, what, two years ago? And I've got some in the drawer that still looks more or less like the day I picked it. So I'm quite, I'm quite chuffed with that, that fine thing, really. <laughs> yeah. But um, in this particular case, there isn't a load of, of um, living stuff, with the exception of the reindeer moss. The, um, the stuff that looks like algae flowing from the ships, um, yeah, all of this coming down the side, going into the water is actually just um, synthetic green wool from, from a craft store that people normally use for the, you know what I mean, they're making the, um, yeah. the woolen figures and woolen. Uh -huh. I am disappointed now. Uh, <laughs> is, that a, is that an anticlimax? <laughs> yeah. But it, that was literally just wool that was um, um, dipped in, in water effects to make it look more um, like algae. And it was quite, I think it looks, it looks quite convincing, I think. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, well, speaking of the sails, 
Mm. Are, are, are those free hands? <laughs> like, yes. I, I must admit, I started to go a little bit crazy towards the end because when I first did this, I was like, oh, this will be easy. I'll just, um, I'll print it off on a piece of paper and I'll have a little stencil and then I'll just, um, I'll spray it. And it came to it and I was like, oh, but it's going to look a bit, it's going to look a bit too, a bit 2D. I was like, I know, I'll, like I've done before with some of my, um, when I paint um, textures and cloth, I sometimes have like a little hash pattern to try and make it look a bit more realistic. And I thought, oh, I'll do a similar thing here. I'll just put a few dots on it. It'll look, it'll look really nice. It'll make it look a bit, uh, a bit deeper. <laughs> I got about halfway through the first, um, the first eye, and I thought, why am I doing this? <laughs> By that stage, it was already too late. So I spent oh, hours doing all three of the ship names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they turned out really well, though. But <laughs> enough about the models and ships. Like the actual board, though, the, the water looks excellent. I mean. You made the beach look wet, even somehow. <laughs> yeah, um, it, I must admit that was um, a little bit of an accident because the the first when I first came to paint the the beach, um, we had so we put down the sand layer and we put all the plants and you can kind of see there this this is in the when it was still a work in progress. You can see a bit better here that we've submerged we um, submerged little plants and uh, some of the idoneth fish as well. So you first uh, added the sand. Then you started putting out little, little bits and layers. doodads and uh, just adding in small details and then layer and layer with some resin or with what? resin. Yeah. So it was a two part, um, two part epoxy resin, but it was one of the ones that you can only do in, in layers. I think it was two or three millimeters deep. Mm -hmm. I've seen in lots of other places, people who have the, the stuff that can set a lot deeper, but yeah. I didn't, we didn't have any of that. And also I th this stuff was relatively cheap because as you can tell, we ended up using quite a lot of this by the end. Yeah. By then there was about, 10 liters maybe something like that <laughs> um but yeah so so um we ended up doing it in lots of very thin layers so it took as you can imagine building that up over in two three millimeter layers took a well took a few weeks at least i think <laughs> once we got to yeah and then once we got the 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 water to a reasonable height up the beach we then started adding some this is vallejo uh water effects to give it like a choppy wave effect on top mm which um, I, I really I really like this product. This was quite good. But yeah. the, um, the thing was we then had the, the strange line along the beach where it met the, the sand and it looked a little bit unnatural. So we, um, we tried to disguise that a little bit in the end by having some surf. And the surf, I think, was a very happy accident because yeah. um, we, we thought, oh, we need something to disguise this gap. And um, I've been playing around with, with bicarbonate of soda and PVA as a mix with lots of other projects recently. And I was like, oh, that looks similar. So this is a mixture of bicarbonate of soda and uh, white paint and a little bit of PVA glue just um, dabbled on top. And the, the end result was surprisingly realistic. I was quite um, shocked, really. I know I'm not meant to say that. I meant to say, oh, it was all intentional. But it was <laughs> yes, this plan. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, it turned out really excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was quite quite chuffed with that in the end. Really, the the water effect came out quite nicely. <laughs> and uh, then you also made this really excellent, excellent. I don't know if you could call him a centerpiece, but uh, he said uh, <laughs> the guy commanding the rest with. It, it's kind of ironic, really, because in the end we we tucked him away at the back of one of the ships, <laughs> so you can't you can barely see him at all. Um, but he was kind of inspired by sort of Pirates of the Caribbean, Captain Barbosa, that kind of thing, with his monkey and the, the tentacles around his face. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, they, you know, Davy Jones and Barbosa, Dragon Ball Fuse somehow. It was kind of a yeah, a mixture of both, isn't he? Really, in the end. <laughs> yeah. But he was quite um, he was quite fun because he's using a um, a Death Jester, the the Harlequin Death Jester, Jester yeah. uh, the old fine cast one as a base. Yeah. Because I had it sitting around for a while, and I was like, it had quite a few holes, and I was like, oh, what can I from? Because it was a slightly interesting cast, and I was like, oh, what could I use this for? And I was like, oh, it's already filled with holes. Let's let's try and whack it on the Nurgle board, and it came out quite. Yeah, I think it's um, it's passable, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And then just a powder monkey on his arm. A little powder monkey, yeah. Yeah. Well, the only thing in the army that isn't really as Nurgleified as I, I guess I would suspect it would be. I mean. He's relatively healthy compared to the rest of the board somehow. Uh, <laughs> the monkey himself, I mean, he's, got, he's definitely got something wrong with his eyes. Yeah. He's, he's, he's definitely got something wrong with him. Well, I mean, 
a monkey with pink eye, that's one thing. A guy with a tentacle <laughs> face, that's a whole other tier somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's um I think he does look particularly normal compared to um the face that's next to him. <laughs> yeah, indeed. The guy takes good care of his monkey, basically. Um, <laughs> or maybe it's a recent acquisition, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, is there something else I've missed with the board you would like to talk about? Mm, I, I mean, the only other thing that I don't think um, we've spoken about is the the horrendously terrifying things on the the Santa Maria. If, sorry, on the Santa Malaria. Um, if you look at that close up, yeah, there, for example, on the the Santa Malaria is full of these monstrosities that I've been using as plague bearers in in game, but are actually um, these strange fungus monsters that are sort of a combination of tyranid uh, hormagon. Is that the one with the, the, the knives for hands? Yeah, it's uh, hormagon. It's termagons. That, that's the shooty ones. Shoot. Ah, yeah. So the, the, the stabby ones, the, the hormagons, um, using the bodies of the hormagons and um, various and the heads of the uh, of plague bearers to make them look uh, kind of terrifying, to be honest. I, uh, it, this was another one of those conversions where you do it and then uh, halfway through painting them, you start to think, was this a good idea or is this actually your nightmare fuel? <laughs> uh, we all have those. And yeah. then you have the uh, Loth and the guy who counts uh, dreadlocks or whatever you would call yeah. those. He's got, um, I, I, should have, I should have included more pictures of him. Um, I haven't actually posted him yet. I need to get around to doing that. But he's using the, um, the Ideneth tentacle uh, octopus monster thing that's yeah. normally the, um, the pet as his, um, as his hairdo, essentially. <laughs> yeah, it's an excellent board and it, uh, it will be fun to see what results it gets on the armies on parade, I guess. Well, thank you very much. No, I, the, only, the only thing is I'm, I'm very conscious that it's quite nice and it looks quite... Um, it's quite a nice overall picture, but it um, is definitely lacking on the army, which is definitely not the same that could be said for yours. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of mine, then, I, I think I might have, uh, well, the opposite issue to you, that I have too much <laughs> stuff on my board. Um, well, um, you say that, but it is very striking. I mean, the immediate thing that, 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 that hits you when you see it is just, wow, wow, what am I looking at? And uh, I think the problem is the more you look, the more you you, you keep going. Wow, what I, I, is that? <laughs> is that converted with? Oh my word! That one figure uh, is is using about seven different um, kits, and then that just continues throughout the entire board. Uh, for me, it's is phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Actually, like when I start an army, I look at the base models and consider like, hmm. What don't I like about these? And then mm. just replace everything I don't like and try to build something. <laughs> well, which turned out quite crazy with this project, to be honest. But and well, um, the reason why I made this board though is for um, our spring run tournament, which didn't happen due to COVID. And they tend to get like super competitive. If you see, like for example, an Idunet army with the real waves just splashing around, or a flying star drake with uh, like lightning wings and whatever, that's what it usually turns out to be. And so I figured I need a really impressive display board in order to take home uh, the competition. I think you would have got it. I think it looks, uh, I think it would have been very hard to beat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and the thing is though, because you're, if you're, um, the thing is, if you're submitting this, the only problem is going to be that no one's going to know about the water because it's not running <laughs> you water. Can't photograph you water. can't photograph running water. I, I, that's the bit that still gets me about this, the fact that it actually works, the fountains. <laughs> but was it particularly difficult to do, the, the engineering and getting it working, or was it relatively straightforward? Water will always flow downwards. So this, how it works is that it has some internal tanks with uh, two pumps in them. And as long as the tanks are below the surface level of the actual basins out on the board, the water will flow down through the pipe back to the internal tank into the pump and then out through the griffin that is incredible <laughs> and i use it, it, it like getting the shit not to leak <laughs> big one. so um i use like this um some boat epoxy that was like 100 percent leak proof and just went ham on it until the entire uh, outer basin was completely leak proof <laughs> it was essentially plumbing at that stage, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, uh, maybe what you should mention, it has uh, an internal um, homemade power bank as well. So 
there's no cables or anything coming through it. It's just the board you put down, put in water, click the on button, and the fountain starts to work. It's incredible. Would you, if it, if uh, there was a problem with the pump, would it be easy to get back into? Or would you be able to? Yeah, to you pump? can open up the entire board. Ah, it's right. easy. Oh, yeah, okay. I've done that mistake before. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the, the the plants and the scenery, um, what what are you using here? Is it mostly? It's um, some bushes from Green Stuff World for the actual uh, bush-like structures. Otherwise, the small tufts on the board, it's uh, from uh, this British company called uh, Timia something. Timia One, maybe. Timia One, oh, I think I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're quite good, aren't they? They're quite yeah, good. They're really good, but it's hard getting the plants as he won't ship them to a store outside of England and you just have to order and there's some weird... <laughs> well, it, it's weird when you order them, basically. <laughs> but if you can go through that hassle, really recommend them yeah they look really nice yeah but um i mean the, the biggest thing of course with yours is all of the the centerpieces because i mean <laughs> there's you haven't even just got the one centerpiece i think you've got <laughs> it's all the centerpieces all, it's all of the centerpieces exactly <laughs> yeah so there's the celestan prime which is originally part of my stormcast army i guess who's um well painted it ages ago but i really wanted it to be different somehow and uh, it started out actually as a um, project like way way back when the Celestan Prime first came out and I thought like this guy I should convert into Sigmar so I gave him a head and you know the lightning spear and removed the weird Celestan Prime wings but there weren't any like decent feathery wings back then so the project was left on hold until I found a certain model called Sanguinius. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, the silhouette, it really draws you. The thing is, you're, you're, you're kind of um, competing with looking at him and then looking at the, um, the, 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 the big cat at the front. <laughs> because yeah. that, again, is, is using, because that's the, um, the Slaves to Darkness, um, whatever it's called, isn't it? Yeah, the Mind Stealer Svirank, I think. Like, as you said, there's so much to see on the board. And I think uh, it's... Uh, when I made the board, I first thought about like how you draw people in to look at your army and uh, actually get people to vote on it. Mm -hmm. So first, people hear this uh, dripping sound from the fountains and go like, what the hell is that? <laughs> you see the board that's not really a usual shape for a board. I guess it's more like diamond shaped and try to add a lot of lines, which brings your focus to the center of the board, but also that you can look through like various stages. It's like the ground stage for the small troops. It's the upper stage for like support troops and um, well, cannons and gyrocopters and everything. And then the top stage for like models that you actually properly painted and not just rush through. Mm -hmm. So, and also there's a centerpiece here and there. So you can look at them and just find stuff on every level that will catch you and just keep the person at the board finding more and more stuff. Yeah, no, I think they're, they're incredible. I also enjoyed the, the, the portal, the portal portals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Soul Screen Bridge is an absolutely horrible model to play with, by the way. It hangs out like three inches from the base. You can't properly surround it and it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you say you say that the ones on the top level are the only ones you've painted well, but everything's been done with um, non-metallic metal, hasn't it? I don't think there's many people who, who could uh, could say that about an, an army even a third of this size. Yeah, and I mean, the, uh, okay, I'm going to brag a bit now. I'm exceptionally <laughs> fast at making projects. Like, I started this army maybe in, I think, January or something. So it's uh, been like... Well, say it, 10 months to get the army done. And it's a quite impressive army for 10 months, I must say. Must, must oh, say. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. For 10 months. I mean, well, you saw what I've done in two years. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's incredible. I also, I really enjoy your, your Hurricaneum as well. The Hurricaneum that's half Hurricaneum, half steam tank, half, half who knows what. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, uh, they actually brought that one up on uh, the Warhammer community, like, Roundup, we're just calling it absolute madness, and uh, that it's super well painted. So it was quite an ego boost, I must say. So <laughs> that is fun. I, I do enjoy that because it's the, the steam tank, but up, upside down, isn't it? It's an upside down, backside front steam tank. Mm, it's 
very good. That does seem to be a good way of starting. If you want to make a, a unique conversion that no one's done before, if you turn things upside down, it's always a good place to start. Because <laughs> then it, people go, whoa, look what he did. He did it upside down. It's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw the, the, the steam tank you know, so were twisting it around. and like, hmm, this sort of looks like a Model T Ford. I wonder if I could just add a platform up there and then it's a hurricane. And, and yeah, yeah, I think it turned out excellent. And I mean, it's <laughs> like... It, it fits my army somehow. I mainly play this army as Greywater, and they are all about uh, steampunk and uh, just having steam engines everywhere. So, yeah, yeah like it. it's because it, it does. There's a, such a lot going on, but it does look quite cohesive because you have the the color scheme running through everything with the yeah. uh, with the blue and the the, the ready pink. It does. It does still look like a cohesive whole, even though you've got so much and so many different visual um, aspects going on. It's really nice. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, actually a meme running through my paint community it's that the turquoise and the magenta is the painting meta because it's like a really you you look at color wheel and it's like the perfect combination of colors in order to add in like bits and pieces. For example, it's uh, magenta turquoise. They are how to explain it on a it they, well, it, they contrast each other really well, and then you have a lot of colors to pick from that work well with them, like the yellow, and uh, then moving on to a bit into the blue, and also like pure red with the green on the base. It's, it's all very, very thought through when picking the color scheme. Yeah, and it does, and you can see it when you extend through to the yellows on the on the dragon, for example, and it doesn't look out of place. It's it's really it's really good. Yeah, it's it's the same yellow as uh, the portal actually. So, oh. <laughs> and also the same yellow that I used to base in all my gold non-metallic metal. Mm -hmm. So it matches the rest of the force. It's very nice, and and you you've been quite successful with it as well as an army, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it, lately though I've been more of an organizer than a player. But yeah, it's a it, it's a quite decent army. It, it shoots <laughs> like hell and just removes stuff, but. I haven't really played it much in uh, like the really current meta on um, in the end game of tournaments. So I think like for example Lumineth and uh, also some Seraph from builds will g give me so much pain. It's mm -hmm. incredible because everything in how the army is built is that it needs to get the freaking bridge cost, and you can't do that versus Seraph on most of the time. And if the Lumineth player outdrops you, takes first turn, goes forward and just auto dispels it with Teclis. Mm. It's sad times. <laughs> it's interesting. Have you seen any of the other any other entries for armies on parade? I must admit, I've I've not been um, particularly with it. I haven't seen a great deal of others so far. But I'm always I always quite enjoy. It. I do think it's a really good time of year for for inspiration because you always see something that's very creative and you know, oh wow, that's uh, I hadn't I hadn't thought about that. Even a new theme or a new uh, way of presenting stuff. <laughs> yeah. People have done some really impressive stuff. There's like this mechanicum board with uh, just, yeah, it's incredible. Loads of like weathering and several different levels with people standing on it. And there's some ogre kingdom as well with uh, uh, this big uh, Gork and Mork statue. And um, um, is it Vincent Ventula who has done like um, a, a aircraft carrier or something for his uh, Tempest Eye City? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, think, I think probably there's a there's an element of this year of um, lots of people have, have tried to up their game a bit because they know it's going to be more of an international uh, than just the one competition this year. So it's all or nothing, basically. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's going to be really sad. I, I, I don't think any of us no. two are going to be even in the top five, but I, I still think we have a few impressive pro projects, to be honest. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Well, um, Jan, I'd like to thank you for appearing on as a guest on this episode. And, uh, well, who knows? Maybe we can find something else to talk about in the future. I'm sure we, we will. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, um, do remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. And uh, check out Jan's Instagram for more amazing Beastmen and Nurgle or whatnot. <laughs> yeah, thanks for today. All right.